my 16 subscribers. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Dahlia. This is like my 10th time filming this. Um, not easy. <laughs> for whatever reason, I'm struggling. So I'm here to do my July wrap up. Um, I did a mid-July book review, which I discussed four of the books that I read at the beginning of the month. And then now I'm gonna come back with the remaining four books that I read at you know the mid mark to the end of the month. So in total, that's eight books. I am happy with that. I think that's a good reading month. And um, yeah, I'm excited to discuss some of these books with you. Um, and I also wanted to say thank you for anyone who has commented on my videos. I love getting comments. It's really fun. Um, I got a really great comment from someone named Mark Rabel or Rabel. I don't know how to say that but he actually requested that I discuss um, some of the philosophy reading material that I would recommend. So I think that's a really interesting question. Um, thank you for making that comment. And I would be interested in doing like a video about that sort of dedicated to that question um, or even a number of videos. So I don't know if that's something that anyone would be interested in, I would love to do that. And on that note, um, I will say I would love, I would love to hear in the comments down below <laughs> um, what some of your favorite books are, you know? I would love some more engagement with my subs. So yeah, tell me what your favorite books are, what you think I'd like to read, and um, I'll try and read some of them, so that would be really great. I finished the Rachel Cusk trilogy, starting with, I read this last month, so in June. It starts with Outline, and then it ends with, or rather progresses with Transit, and then ends with Kudos. So this is a really confounding um, collection of novels, mostly because if you've read them, you will know that um, the Outline trilogy is essentially plotless, the characters are very underdeveloped, and it's, you know, it's it's really strange that three books, you know, that Cusk has been able to sustain three books with basically no plot, basically no character development, and the entire trilogy sort of rests on these encounters that the narrator has um, with strangers or, you know, students, um, or people at, like, literary festivals, and that's, that is the premise of this trilogy. So, you know, it's this narrator, we know very little about her, um, she does not reveal much about herself at all, in fact, her name, I think, is only mentioned once per book. So, her name is Faye, but we don't know that until late in Outline, and then I think it's mentioned one more time in Transit and one last time in Kudos. So she remains pretty evasive. We know that she has two sons. Um, we don't, I don't think we learn their names. She is separated from her, you know, previous partner. It's very interesting to me that these books are as readable and addicting as they are given that there is basically no plot, not a lot of character development, and it, as I mentioned, it does rest pretty heavily on just these very insightful, observational conversations that she has with people. That's more or less, you know, these books. And it sounds boring. It sounds so boring. But reading them, I, I didn't want to put them down. They're so readable. I do think that Outline is far and above the best of the three and the most memorable. This at least had some semblance of a plot and I think, I think that that's important just to anchor the novel a little bit and make it just that much more memorable um, because Transit and Kudos really just they seem untethered to me they're not you know it's it's a lot harder to remember some of these conversations 
simply because they're so plotless um, and there's so little that's going on to really like ground the story. Um, in transit, this is this is transit. Uh, the plot is essentially, you know, she's with her two sons. She moves from I think the countryside over back to London, and she purchases this house that's essentially uninhabitable as she describes it and she has to do this giant renovation in order to make the house livable and the um, renovators are telling her like this project is huge it's gonna you know be really expensive we don't even know if we can do this and meanwhile she has these neighbors that live underneath her that are like using broomsticks and banging on the wall on the ceiling of you know, their apartment um, because they're really unhappy with the renovation happening and they're very vocal about it and it's it's very exaggerated and it, yeah, it just takes on kind of like a comical sort of uh, feel to it. I want to say that there's this feeling of irony where, you know, she's moving and trying to settle in and in the midst of that there's a lot of chaos that you know that results from from her attempt to settle in so so yeah so i, I did like transit um but again i would say that i preferred outline for sure and um yeah i mean i mean i liked it i thought it was really good but not as memorable as outline and and probably because again i think that that's the issue of plot you know there there really isn't enough plot going on to kind of make this novel stick if that makes sense and kudos um kudos this starts off the same way that outline starts starts off where um she's on a plane she's going to a, f a literary festival and she has this lengthy conversation with her, the guy sitting next to her on the on the plane over, and um, I will say I'm I'm sure other people have picked up on this. The conversations that she has with everyone in these books are not realistic. They're equipped with some revealing story always, uh, and they have these insights and observations that. You know, run. You you're, you wouldn't have these conversations with people that you bump into on a daily basis. So, for people who might accuse Cusk of being contrived and unrealistic, uh, sh sure. But again, I don't think that was the aim of these conversations. I think rather she's actually trying to say something that has some meaning attached to it. She ends up going to a literary festival where she meets. A number of people and you know the number of people that she means it becomes too difficult to track and uh, she describes like the settings and the different hotels that this event is taking place at and some of this I found just bored me to tears honestly the middle of this whole novel really wasn't for me I liked the beginning and I liked the ending the third book I read this month was Deborah Levy's Hot Milk. Uh, this one, the, or sorry, no, was shortlisted for the Man Booker in 2016, and it follows the story of Sophia and her mother, Ruth, who has a sort of mystery illness, and they go to um, Spain, a province in Spain called Almeria, I believe, and um, there they kind of, they, Ruth is admitted to this very unorthodox clinic uh, called the Gomez Clinic who has taken her on as a patient to try and figure out her illness. So Ruth's illness, uh, basically she has trouble walking, but intermittently she is able to walk. So it's not, you know, it's not clear if this is sort of a phantom disease, like a phantom illness and her, and her um, symptoms are simply psychological or if there is actually in fact something that's uh, medically wrong happening. So then during their time in Spain, Sophia meets this German seamstress named Ingrid and she becomes very enamored with her 
and um, they kind of have this weird lover's tryst type thing. Sophia goes and visits um, her father who left them when she was very young and she goes to visit him in Greece with uh, his new wife and their new daughter. There's a lot of imagery, symbolism, motifs, if you will, running through this book. Um, primarily, if you've read it, you'll know that the mentioning of jellyfish, or in Spanish apparently it's called medusas, um, that's, that comes up a ton. Also, there is this preoccupation with this Alsatian dog, which I learned is a German Shepherd, um, and this dog is bound up uh, by a chain and it, it's barking kind of endlessly. There's a lot of Greek mythology that's mentioned and um, I kind of gathered that a lot of this was hinting or pretty obviously <laughs> suggesting this relationship that Sophia has with her mother being one where she feels bound and chained to her mother and her illness. Um, she kind of experiences some of her mother's illness just sort of by osmosis or just by being around her mother so much and her life is essentially put on hold because of her mother's illness and since she is her caregiver. She's an academic and studied anthropology and she wants to pursue her PhD but because of her mother's illness, she kind of puts her life on hold and uh, has a lot of inner conflict about her relationship with her mother and how overbearing it is. It's, it's, an, interesting, it's an interesting book. I, I enjoyed it, though it, it is a little bit um, overly literary, if that makes sense. While I was reading it, I enjoyed it, but I never really wanted to like, I wasn't so compelled to pick it up when I wasn't reading it. So. Um, I thought this was good and it, the writing is good and you know it's an it's an interesting story but I did not love it so in terms of like its quality as a book I would say you know it's good <laughs> but um, for whatever reason it just didn't didn't really speak to me in um in any special sort of way okay we're at the final book of July so after reading Cusk and Deborah Levy's Milk, I was kind of in the mood for something uh, not super literary, you know, I, I'd been re you know, I just kind of felt like something light and breezy. My genre of choice for that type of a thing is definitely psychological thrillers, and I decided to read Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris. This is horrible. This is such a fucking awful piece of shit book. It's, it's not even a book. It's what this is, and I'm sure, you know, I don't want to sound like a snob, but really this is just commercial manufactured garbage. They pump these out like no tomorrow. Yeah, this makes look lying in wait by Liz Nugent, like a literary man. And um, that was an okay novel. So, so this is, this is really, I think, in terms of it being a psychological thriller, uh, it hits all those check marks, but it's a pretty poor example of it, in my opinion. The story, as you can, you know the story from looking at the book, and it, it's it's a woman. Her name is Grace, and she meets this man named Jack, who is a lawyer, and he specifically um, defends women who have been in violent or abusive relationships, and he is like, you know so handsome, so perfect. His name is Jack Angel. That is his actual name in the book. And they get married and um, the minute they get married, you know, the twist, the big twist is that obviously he's crazy, he's a psychopath, he's like totally demented and basically decides to imprison her. And um, his whole thing is like, he's all fetishistic over fear and he loves it and um that's that's the that's the big reveal is um grace has a sister who has down syndrome and oh my god the way that this book portrays down syndrome is just awful you know it 
that was the one thing about this book where I thought it was really distasteful. Um, like everything else was expected, but to me that was actually like offensive, you know, like I, I was like, the way that that character was written was beyond offensive. You know, she couldn't speak properly. Um, yeah, it was something else. The writing is horrible. There's no character development. Um, the plot I thought was lazy and, but then again, you can read it in like five minutes or, you know, less than. And there was one part where I just thought, the right, you know, this part I wanted to read because of how bad it was. And it kind of, I remember actually laughing. And so this is, this is an example of what the writing is like here. So it says, fear, he whispered. There's nothing quite like it. I love how it looks, I love how it feels, I love how it smells, and I especially love the sound of it. I felt his tongue on my cheek. I even loved the taste of it. You disgust me, I hissed. You must be one of the most evil people that has ever lived, and I'll get you, Jack. I promise, in the end, I'll get you." You know, like, I actually laughed when I was reading that. It's such poor writing. Um, there's really nothing else to say about this. It's don't read it. It's, it's so, it's, <sighs> thank you for watching my July book reviews. That's that. Um, those are my reads for July. If you've made it this far, I really appreciate it. Please comment down below. I love reading the comments. Uh, I know I have 16 subscribers. Thank you for subscribing. It means a lot to me. Um, and I will see you in the next one. Um, Thank <sniffs> you.